Building a high-performing sales team is the backbone of any successful business. But how do you hire the right talent, grow the team, and scale efficiently? Whether you're a startup founder or a sales leader at an established company, this is how to build a team that exceeds targets. Is that kind of sales rep that it attracts going to be one that's going to protect your brand? Or do you need to offer that base salary so that they have some assurances and they're not going to go starve if they don't close a deal and therefore they'll be more likely to represent your brand in the right way? A lot of choices here. I'll go into depth in another video, but uh, in general, that's what an AE is. And again, we've got a job listing here. You can click on that and you will get a uh, job listing so that you have job description that you can use uh, that's effective for an AE. Next role and a very underappreciated one is sales ops. Sales operation manages tools and technologies, handles data analysis, um, make sure that the sales process is effective. So this is the person who manages your CRM and uh, make sure that the sales process is optimized. So if you're a startup uh, and you're doing it yourself, Having a virtual assistant can really help here because it's somebody who's taking a look at this every single day and looking at where where can we improve the process? Where can we make a change to our sales process, which would be effective in getting more leads down in the pipeline? Are we using the CRM efficiently? Do the people who are using the CRM uh, have the templates that they need to really uh, make sure that the sales uh, process is effective and the sales presentations are effective and the email are going out and all that good stuff. So a VA can help if you don't have a sales ops person. Uh, then there's sales management. Um, so this is as your team gets bigger, they are directors overseeing the sales team. And uh, their responsibility is to set quotas, which might vary depending on the targets of the, of the company. So it varies over time. Quotas will change. Uh, they think about entering new markets if there's new offerings. And how do we map those new offerings of the company uh, or new products? onto the sales commission structure. How do we incentivize people? Do we want to promote the new thing more? Do we want to pr promote a certain mix of things based on the capacity of the company? So that's what sales management needs to think about. And this is more about strategic planning, leadership, and uh, very importantly, motivational skills and training skills. Uh, we're going to talk about training in a little bit, but a big part of sales management is training and having salespeople that are you're investing in and training them is really important. If right now you are the only salesperson, you might not even have much training, but you're overcoming that by being the founder. And no, like I'm going to say a million times, no one can sell like the founder because you have the fire of having created the thing and you have all the credibility of the person who can make a final determination. You still should get sales training yourself. But if you have a team, it's even more important because it can go off the rails if they really don't understand the product, the market, the psychology of the buyer. These are all incredibly important things. And the, the job of sales management is to make sure that they understand this and it's being communicated effectively. So uh, sales management might be you for a while. Uh, I, I don't know if you have a sales team now, but as you hire your first reps or if you've got a small sales team, maybe you're the sales manager, don't bow out of this too soon. It's very tempting to want to get out of sales. There's some people who love sales, but there's a lot who want to just be doing more product. They want to be doing more back end or inventing the next thing and they don't want to do the sales management. Abdicating on this too soon can be very fatal. So don't check out on sales management or don't just hire a sales manager and say, okay, well, that's done. You really need to make sure that this is dialed in because the sales is the lifeblood of the company and you will be fighting fires if you unplug from this too soon. So that is who to hire when and affording them. Um, we're gonna talk about some calculators in a moment. Uh, so let's talk about scaling sales from small to huge. So we're gonna talk about how, what are the steps that you're gonna get, uh, go through from going from startup to grow up to scale up. And these are each gonna be different depending on your industry, however, there are these common stages. So let's go uh, through them. And at the end, we're gonna see some worksheets that, that you will have access to. Again, all downloadable below. Um, and these are the phases. So let's start up with startup. Uh, multiple roles, one person. You're wearing lots of hats. It's usually the founder. And what you're doing is both generating the leads and closing the sales. Uh, so you're doing pretty much everything. The important thing at this, at this stage is to recognize you are hat switching. Uh, 
to recognize when you are being the SDR, top of the funnel, when you are being the AE, bottom of the funnel, and make a mental note of it and switch roles. If you munge it up and just say, I'm doing sales stuff, this is very common, I'm doing sales stuff, or I've allocated this time to do sales stuff, and then I gotta run off and do delivery or product or whatever else I'm doing, but I'm just doing sales. The problem is that you're not going to think of it in a way that's going to give you numbers that are going to let you hire the team that will save you. What's going to happen is you're going to be doing sales activities. You're not going to be tracking it right because you're not going to be looking at, oh, I did these SDR activities to generate leads for appointments. I generate the sales qualified leads to have sales conversations. So if you just munge it up at sa as sales activities, you will fail at this. And fortunately, I will give you a calculator, which will let you track this stuff. And effective management of your time has to be based on what the role is that you're doing. So you will best are, are best putting a, a calendar appointment saying, this is my time at top of the funnel, right? I'm, I am an SDR now, and then I am an AE now. And you will then start to learn the ratio of how much time you have to spend to qualify leads and get them into a sales conversation. And then how much time does it take in sales conversations to actually close the deal? Those are really, really important numbers. So you're going to have two different job descriptions at this stage. Uh, so I really was not measuring the right things uh, when I had my marketing agency and I started out. I was just, you know, it's a, it's a swirl. You're doing everything at once and you're relying on. So I try a marketing campaign and it gets a bunch of uh, potential leads in there, but I have to qualify all of those leads. So I was doing what we called triage calls uh, in which we would uh, triage the, the live from the dead uh, and push some of them into sales conversations. But I I really wasn't watching that very carefully. So when it came time to hire my first sales reps, I didn't have the data that would tell me accurately how many, uh, you know, what stage should I hire? Should I hire an SDR? Should I hire an AE? Or should I hire uh, AE and, and make a poor decision to make them do SDR work and AE work? I didn't have that information and that cost me money. So uh, that's the startup phase. Now let's say you grow up. Now you're starting to hire a sales team, all right? The first thing I uh, would encourage you to think about is the NOAA principle, always hire two at a time. Don't hire one. I, I understand you are worried that you are gonna be spending money on someone who's not working out. But as you will see shortly, I will tell you how to do that. They will not be around long. It's not like you're gonna have two people for a year. You're gonna quickly know. And if you only hire one, you don't know if they're good or not good. You don't know, is it the leads that are not good or is it the person who's not good? Because they're not the same as you. So maybe, you know, you're the founder. No one closes like the founder. Uh, maybe is that the issue? But if you hire two at the same time, you will have an A-B test. You will have a much better idea where the issue lies. So that little, it's not redundancy, but that test that you're doing, remember we're talking about scientific entrepreneurship here. It is a test that you're doing and you're seeing does a, person A or person B, are they better suited for this? So you, you should hold on to sales for probably longer than you want to, but when you do, do this A-B test, use the NOAA principle. Uh, you got two of them. Um, and I made this mistake again. My first time around, I hired one rep and I didn't know if it was her or if it was the leads or did I need to train her more? Did she not understand the company? And then I tried doing some and I could close them again and then she couldn't and I realized it was her and that was the problem. I didn't have an A-B test. So the next time I hired two and then I could say, ooh, this one is way better than that one. Uh, so that is the principle to think about as you start to grow up. The video you just saw is part of a more in-depth training guide on building a high-performing sales team and applying strategies from companies generating over $10 million in revenue. You can watch the full video by clicking right here.